The movie begins by showing a 54-year-old solitary English gentleman named Victor Maynard, a highly skilled hitman from a distinguished line of professional assassins in the London boroughs. Victor had recently accomplished his 47th target on the kill list, receiving a bountiful payment of British pounds that were purposefully cut in half due to his client's policy of a half now, half later payment. He learns French through a recording tape as he fixes the paper notes in his house. Upon stepping out, he kills a jeweler and kidnaps his pet parrot, who annoyingly confesses its love for him after being held at gunpoint. That afternoon, Victor arrives at Memory Lane, an assisted living home for retirees, where his intimidating widowed mother, Louisa, is staying. During the visit, she expresses concern about him preserving the family reputation while gifting him a scrapbook featuring newspaper clippings of all his victims during his assassination tenure. She hopes he will settle down with someone since he is already in his 50s. Elsewhere, clever con artist Rose is coercing her friend Jerry Bailey, a restoration painter at the National Gallery, to provide a duplicate artwork of Rembrandt, which she will sell to a buyer. After preparing her scheme and wearing a disguise, she meets with a billionaire, Mr. Ferguson, and offers the fake painting for a hefty price of £900,000. The sale pushes through with approval from an inspector who declares the painting authentic. Rose then immediately packs up the real Rembrandt and the money bag inside a getaway van and escapes. Later, Mr. Ferguson is enthused over his newly acquired masterpiece until he notices a smudge on his face when he touches the painting. He then angrily realizes he was duped by Rose and calls for Victor to place a bounty on her. Later, Rose gives Jerry a money cut and advises him not to push her luck too far. Immediately afterward, Victor gets to work and follows her along the city streets, observing her pickpocketing tactics. Thinking he has cornered her in a changing room, he shoots the cloth cover, only to see Rose on the other side of the street wearing a headdress. He follows her inside a cafe, where she changes clothes before leaving for a motel. Once there, she entices the attendant for a room key and a night with him for sexual intimacy. Victor seizes the opportunity to perch on another building's balcony and attempts to snipe her, only to obstruct the view. After spending the night listening to her arousing screams, he awakens and prepares to shoot her, only to stop as he seems infatuated with her. He confesses his failure to his mother, who urges him to correct his mistakes to save his reputation. Not long after, Victor corners Rose at a parking garage, only to save her from one of Mr. Ferguson's bodyguards, Barney, by killing him. Amid the confusion, he gets inside her car with her but gets spooked by another bodyguard, Mike. As the pair are forced against a wall, Mike gets shot by a homeless bystander, Tony, who picked up Barney's gun by accident. The scared young man relinquishes the weapon to Victor, who becomes sympathetic and commends him for using restraint instead of killing the bodyguard. After hiding a knocked out Mike in the stairwell, Victor tries to kill him, but Tony stops him, convincing him to escape before the police arrive. As Tony leaves, Rose profusely thanks Victor for the accidental rescue and offers him a half-sum payment to protect her. When asked about his profession, he claims to be an undercover detective chasing after a client's cheating wife. Chaos ensues as Mike awakens and shoots their car, forcing them to flee with Tony, who gets run over. Now, on the run, Victor decides to lay low with Rose and Tony in a luxurious hotel room. Unbeknownst to him, however, Mr. Ferguson is staying in another suite opposite their own. Once inside, Victor moves around the furniture to prepare a defensive position, but Rose could be more enthusiastic about listening to his instructions while Tony immerses himself in a soccer match on TV. By evening, Rose steps out, much to the hitman's consternation. He requests that Tony help him look after her, taking him under his wing as an apprentice after mulling over whether he is interested in the young man. At the bar, he apologizes to Rose for being slightly unpleasant, and the pair chat for a while until the con artist tries to flirt with the bartender after feeling exasperated by his ramblings. Meanwhile, the incompetent Mike returns to Mr. Ferguson with a bruised arm as he tries to explain why the plan went awry, leading to Barney's death. As Mr. Ferguson reprimands him, a drunk Rose mistakenly knocks at his door, believing it is her room. Fortunately, Victor guides her and apologizes to Ferguson, with the pair failing to recognize each other, having never met. Exhausted, the con artist leaves her boots outside and reluctantly sleeps on the bed with Tony while Victor stands guard. The following day, Mr. Ferguson is visited by a second-class hitman, Hector Dixon, with whom he confides about his predicament about the hitman he hired having a change of heart. Realizing he is talking about Victor, whom he despises for being more skilled than him, he accepts Mr. Ferguson's hit job. Elsewhere, Mike skulks around Victor's suite after seeing Rose's boots outside the door. He finds Tony and tries to drown him, only for the young man to nervously shoot him in the ear before escaping. He then alerts the pair at the buffet room, and the trio quickly gets from the hotel. Not long after, 
Mike alerts Mr. Ferguson about their escape as he points at the red Mini Cooper Rose revealed she stole the previous day. The pair then chase after the trio on the narrow streets as Victor urges the con artist to give him the wheel. After some minutes of driving through traffic, they lose Mr. Ferguson and Mike, who crash into a barrier while trying to avoid a mother pushing her baby's carriage. Though out of danger, Victor furiously declares they must get out of town, fearing the police will get involved. Despite this, Rose feels entitled to his services since she promises to pay him £30,000 weekly for protection, much to Tony's surprise. The trio then stops at a gas station when she demands restroom use. While waiting, Victor tells Tony he will train him for six weeks on every trick in the assassination handbook, though he pretends that all the skills he will learn are for legitimate detective work. Believing he can trust the boy, he reveals his real name. Suddenly, Rose dashes back to the car with a stolen haul of gas station goods, forcing the trio to flee from the store manager. Victor castigates her for her thievery, calling her immature, but she remains unfazed as she enjoys her snack. After traveling through the English countryside, they arrive at Victor's family mansion. Rose looks upon entering his home after seeing all his furniture wrapped in plastic. Victor explains that his grandfather previously owned it and passed it to him by his mother when she transferred to the nursing home. Tony is immediately smitten with his pet cat, Snowy, whom Victor treats like a baby. Victor then leads him and Rose to his spare bedrooms and provides sets of clean bedsheets, much to Rose's intrigue. Elsewhere, Dixon and his partner, Fabian, visit Mr. Ferguson and Mike, who are being treated at the hospital for the injuries they sustained in the accident. The duo assures Mr. Ferguson they will find Victor's whereabouts while he recuperates. Later, at dinner, Victor explains the rules in the mansion, assuring him he needs to enforce them to keep the two safe from other hitmen. Two hours after midnight, he becomes troubled in bed due to the noise in Rose's room. He confronts her, discovering her struggling to turn the bed around to face south. After helping her, he takes her to Tony's room to help her realize she is a disturbance, only to discover that the young man is blasting music. The following morning, Victor looks out the window and is horrified to see Rose digging through the garden with a pickaxe. The young woman angrily explains that she had been picking out magnolias for him since the early morning as a sign of gratitude for helping her sleep. The pair argue, Rose complaining about his atrocious conditions after shrink-wrapping his furniture and keeping his house too clean. She points out that he is on the brink of an identity crisis, which he ponders about while trimming his bonsai tree. He then disrupts Tony's bath to ascertain his confusing sexuality, only to realize he needs to tend to another plant upon seeing his penis. Elsewhere, Dixon allows Fabian to kill the art appraiser and steal the fake painting after getting a list of known artists who painted the Rembrandt. That night, Rose asks for medicine to help her sleep, prompting Victor to administer a foot massage to help her relax. While tending to her needs, she becomes vulnerable and admits liking him even more, which Victor feels equally. Not long after she lulls herself to sleep, Louisa appears and tries to assassinate her, prompting her to flee and alerting Victor, who tries to calm his mother down and convince her that Rose is not a threat. Rose then confesses to Tony that she has fallen for Victor and wishes to live in his house so the three of them can become a family. The following day, they have breakfast with Victor, who apologizes for his mother's behavior. Later, he takes Louisa back to the retirement home as Rose stares from the window with glee. Meanwhile, Dixon and Fabian confront a painter who gives up information about Jerry but gets eliminated. In the evening, Rose and Tony surprise Victor for his birthday, with the trio enjoying drinks, dancing, and party games. After the celebration, Victor takes Rose to the bedroom, where they unravel their feelings for each other. Victor is motivated to remove all the plastic sheets from his furniture the following morning and make his interiors more colorful. Unbeknownst to him, Rose discovers his ruse after rummaging through his closet and finding the scrapbook, a note from his father about his first gun, and pictures of his past targets, including hers. As she prepares to escape, Victor and Tony summon her out of the room for a surprise. Rose fearfully plays along as she gets blindfolded and brought to the stairs. However, she forcefully breaks away from the pair and holds them at gunpoint, believing she is to be eliminated. Victor tearfully admits the truth, and Rose abruptly leaves, heartbroken. He then assures Tony that he has no intention of killing him. Instead, the pair prepares for Dixon's imminent arrival and gears up, with Tony learning how to load a firearm. Rose returns to Jerry the following morning, only to find him murdered by Dixon and Fabian, who appear behind the artwork. When she refuses to reveal information about Victor, Dixon threatens to cut off Jerry's finger and feed it to her, much to Fabian's disgust. Not long after, they arrive at the family house and corner Victor and Tony inside the barn. After making pleasantries, Victor reveals he abandoned his contract after falling for Rose. Dixon then allows him to correct his mistake and kill Rose before he gets assassinated. 
Rose nervously turns her back as Victor points the gun hesitantly, with the pair saying I love you in French. Fortunately, Louisa appears and kills Fabian, instructing Tony to search Dixon for weapons. Amid the conversation, Fabian throws a knife, which Tony catches, allowing Dixon to catch him off guard and hold the trio at gunpoint. Unfortunately, his shot backfires, and he gets killed when the barrel launches at his head and gets buried outside the mansion. Three years later, Victor and Rose, now married, have a son named Angel. During lunch, Tony asks where Snowy is, and Victor sees that Angel secretly buried the cat. The movie ends as he realizes that he will be a worthy successor to him, and he smiles proudly. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.